Good evening, Chairman DeMaria, members of the school board, and Dr. McGorick. This evening, staff will share the updated bid report for the new Baldwin Elementary and Intermediate School project. I'd like to also share with you that present tonight from Mosley Architects are Mr. Jim McCalla and Billy Riggs. Thank you for coming on up for this presentation. As far as general information to share with the board as well as the public, the new Baldwin Elementary and Intermediate address will be 9000 Tudor Lane, which is the current site of the baseball softball complex and the former central office location. Sites relocated to facilitate this new Baldwin construction is a new central office address at 8700 Centerville Road and the new Osborne High School baseball complex site of the future of being at 9705 Main Street, which is our current site of our current Baldwin Elementary School. And again, as a reminder, the current temporary site for the Osborne High School baseball and softball home games will be at Metz Middle School. As background information, funds allocated for this project was $38,050,000. Original cons construction costs were at $31,726,384. On December the 4th, eight responsive construction bids were received and opened with the low bid at $40,627,741. As you know, this low, low bid exceeded the budget by $8.9 million. Included in this project was a 150,000 square feet building that would house pre-K through four elementary, intermediate school for grades five and six, and the division's special education program. Additionally, there was storage space that could be converted to three classrooms for future growth, as well as the Osborne High School baseball softball complex. Finally, there was soil work and also the Baldwin demolition. These are the areas that we addressed to reduce the cost of the project at our past school board meeting. You can see that those are literally from the last slide of those removals. You have received two handouts from Mrs. Clapper, the bid tabulation sheet and the data worksheet. As you can see, the current low bid for consideration is Schweibel Construction at a cost of $32,388,000. If you refer to the bid tabulation sheet, and I mentioned earlier we received eight bids for this project. I'm sorry, six bids for this project. One thing that I'd like to point out on page one is that four of those bids were within $181,000 in the bid that was awarded, uh, not awarded, I'm sorry, that was currently the low bid of $32,388,000, four within $181,000. On the data worksheet that you have as well, this breaks down our costs. You can see that the total budget of $38,050,000, you see the cost for the demolition of our central offices was included in, in that borrow, as well as our design and construction, our work with the education specifications with Mr. DeYoung, the cow, or as we know as the clerk of the works that would be on site when we begin the project, the contingency, furniture and technology costs, techno testing, inspection, and geotech, as well as the third party commissioning. As you can see from this slide, in order to reduce costs, the building was decreased from 154,000 square feet to 140,000 square feet which is now at a cost of $231 per square feet. The following items that have strike throughs were taken out of the project. Coincidentally, Prince William County Public Schools also had a construction bid open on the same day of February 19th. That was for a single elementary school. Discussions were held with Mosley Architects and Swabble Construction immediately and a, and a meeting, as Mr. Albrecht referred to yesterday, to fully understand the cost difference when comparing both schools. The elementary school in Prince William County Public Schools has distinct differences 
that will be illustrated on upcoming slides. Specific features in Baldwin's design is a chilled beam mechanical system. The benefits from this system is the following. Lower energy consumption, extremely low maintenance, a quiet airflow, requires no filter changes in the classrooms. Chilled beam systems have been installed in other K-12 public schools and universities in Virginia. Prince William County is also including the chilled beam system in their upcoming 12th high school. Another significant return on investment is LED lighting, opposed to traditional fluorescent type lighting. This will allow for a five-year return on investment. Manassas City Public Schools has begun this process in changing out LED lighting in and across our school division. With close proximity to historic downtown Manassas, certain expectations were expressed during the design process. The architects used the historic district handbook to guide their design for our Baldwin. The general configuration of the building was a simple rectangular shape as opposed to the overall geometry of the existing Baldwin, for example, that had irregular shapes, wings, various building heights, etc. The new Baldwin is basically a simple T-shape or rectangular blocks with a combination of three-story, two-story, and one-story massing as outlined in the handbook. The building has a monumental scale and presence as outlined in the handbook as being appropriate for governmental buildings. Mosley Ar Architects utilized a low slope roof as prescribed in the handbook for commercial buildings. They utilize windows that are regularly spaced and similar in proportion and type on all facades. They also utilize the ratio of rhythm and placement of windows on the facade of the building to relate to historic buildings. Mosley incorporated a cornice at the top of the exterior walls as prescribed in the handbook. The handbook, handbook states new commercial buildings should use cornices in their designs. The facades of the building are made of brick as stated in the handbook that masonry such as brick should be used for new construction. The diagrams included in the handbook also imply an architectural aesthetic that has been utilized for the new Baldwin School. It is important to note that Baldwin site is not technically within the historic district but is across the edge. It was made clear to us from the beginning of the project when meeting with city planning to comply with these guidelines. In working with Schreibel Construction, these special features account for approximately $608,000. Due to land constraints, the additional cost to have a three-story design also comes with a cost. Schreibel's estimated cost is noted above at $1,579,640. Mosley's architects estimated $1.6 million, very close when comparing both. Ornamental fencing was used in the front of the building for student safety so that students and parents use the crosswalks when entering the building. The city required ornamental fencing at the back of the building and so it was, used, it was also used in the front for continuity. Sort of, can you go back Russell, I'm sorry. It's not the easiest to see, but um, right here is the ornamental fencing. Again, they park or, or whatever, and it requires them to get through the K-4, pre-K-4, and the 5-6. So this is the ornamental fencing. I believe that they said it's three and a half feet tall. Um, and another slide coming up will show clearer that what the fencing looks like. Thanks, Russ. This is the view from Old Town. Note that required screens on the outside equipment and roof fixtures. I'm referring specifically to these fixtures on the roof that are uh, required in the scope of, of the work due to the proximity of Old Town. Also, the ornamental fencing in the bus loop area next to Prince William Street is illustrated in this slide. And there is your ornamental fencing 
there with this being Prince William Street and Main Street up here. This picture shows the ornamental fencing in the front of the building, a much closer look. And the picture also reveals cornices that are required. And uh, for someone that had to look up cornice, what that is is it's these uh, special aesthetic designs that really make the building pop, if you will, on the outside. So these are example of cornices. At a previous school board meeting, staff illustrated how specific classrooms could be added when needed. The next two slides will illustrate specific locations. Estimates for Mosley Architects to add four classrooms on the first floor would be 680,000 and 340,000 for four classrooms on the third floor for a total estimated cost of $1,024,000. The yellow highlighted area on the first floor would be the area for potential expansion as needed, again adding four classrooms. All classrooms would align with the same size as the other classrooms in the building, which is 850 square feet. This is a picture of the third floor, which would allow for the addition of four classrooms, two on each side, that would allow I'm sorry, that would allow for the addition of four classrooms that would be renovated in the extended learning area if needed. Again, those four classrooms would be 850 square feet. Once the Baldwin School is complete, it will be necessary to demolish the existing Baldwin Elementary to make room for the new Osborne High School baseball softball complex, again located at 9705 Main Street. While the athletic complex was part of the original bid, it was not considered on this rebid. The estimated cost for this project is estimated at $4 million. Construction would begin after the demolition. It is recommended that the award for this construction project takes place once the ground is prepared and after demolition, which would allow for a better opportunity at a lower cost. In speaking with our current low construction bid company, specifically Schweibel, there's actually a possibility that the new school could be completed in September of 2016, which was originally planned in our original bid. The table you're looking at now, rather, and I apologize for the small font, but the table above illustrates the construction timelines for a September 2016 opening and a January 2000 opening. Swivel Construction is very anxious to begin this project if the school board approves the staff's recommendation at its next school board meeting on March 10, 2015. Students transitioning to the new Baldwin would be different depending on the move-in date as noted in the two sections on the slide above. You can see that, that the difference would be in 2016, the current, current Baldwin elementary students fifth grade student zone for Baldwin will begin. So only the fifth grade will be there year one, where it's a year later if we get in in January 17. That concludes our presentation for this evening. And Mr. Helton and I and any other staff stand ready for any questions you may have. Thank you very much, sir. And we appreciate the uh, time consuming work you all have put into this. We'll have to use it. Are there any questions or Um, you, you talked through the, the school, but part of the bid included the, the breezeway. Yes. What is, what is that going to entail? So the breezeway was part of this bid, and um, I believe it's on that sheet that was provided. The cost of the breezeway will be $198,000 for the breezeway at Osborne High School. Um, there, that is part of this bid. It's not part of the 32388. Okay, that funding is different funding from the project when we did Johnson. We just haven't completed that yet. Um, there is some fabrication time with getting that ready, but they understand our urgency to get that part of the project completed quickly. Yeah, I, I should have asked a better question. Okay. Um, remember way back when we talked about having it enclosed? And yes, I'm sorry, it's a breezeway, it's <laughs> not enclosed. So it's a cement foundation, and Mr. Helton may need to help me with the more specifics. 
but it's it's a breezeway, literally, where you, it's, uh, well, Russ, you go ahead. And you probably can explain. I'm going to interject here real quick. Uh, just for those that did not catch this, this is the breezeway between the Osborne High School and the Johnson Wing for students that are transferring back and forth. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Hilton. This is pretty uh, cost dictated that we went with an uh, a canopy over an enclosed structure. Okay. However, uh, yeah. The cost was great, but also one of the other things that we were concerned with is that if we built, it was going to be way over a million dollars to put mm -hmm. the, the walkway in. And if we look at the c current student population at Osborne High School, if there's a need to put in a wing, that would probably be the location of an, an, an additional wing. So adding, putting in a, a, a over a million dollar walkway and then taking it down to put in a wing didn't seem very advantageous at this well, time. And that's exactly where I was going. We, was. we are currently building the walkway, the, 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 the walkways with foundation to it so that we could add and close it if we see our population doesn't grow. But if the population does grow and we have to do a wing, then that's where that wing would go. Mm -hmm. That will also be studied part of, be part of the study in our 2020-2030 cool. um, work that we're doing. That's what I was after. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Mrs. Spesky. Thank you all for all your hard work. Um, it's, this has been a long um, process. One quick question. Um, you um, commented to the exterior aesthetics being required by the city and the design process that the city dictated what the, you pointed out several different things that had to be put onto the building as their requirements. Are all the buildings in Old Town required to have those things? Or which group um, dictated that to us? I'm not sure. Uh, for new construction, they follow that handbook that, I don't know, Mr. McCullough, if you want to share that. Please. So the, there's several other projects getting ready to start in the city. I'm assuming they're going to be held to all of these same constraints is what I'm, I'm trying to follow. Good evening. Um, the city has a... Uh, what they rec refer to as the Historic District uh, guide or Design Guidelines Handbook, I think is what it's called. It depends on what type of building you're building. If they talk about municipal buildings, if it's new buildings or renovations, anything like, there's different sets of criteria depending on what the building's going to be. This falls into, obviously, commercial, uh, governmental type of a building. Uh, so we were using, utilizing the guidelines as set forth for the Historic District. Um, as Jeff mentioned, the Baldwin site actually sits outside of the historic district. When we, very early on in our, it, it, when we started meeting with the planning department with the city, they strongly requested and recommended that we follow the guidelines of the handbook. They're not hard, fast, you have to do this, but we were trying to comply with the desire and the intention of the city. And if actually, if, if you kind of, if it's online on the, the city's website. If you go through that and kind of read through it almost line by line and look at the design concept you'll see kind of what how it grew out of trying to meet the the, the, the intention of that handbook I just was curious since they're putting an apartment complex across the street from this building that it aesthetically will look the same at the substantial cost that it's e you know that that's equal that both things are going to be complementary of each other um, in that sector of our city so that's why I asked where that came from Thank you very much for explanation. Also, I'll note that Mr. Pate said to me just now they are under the same requirements. <laughs> Boy, osmosis there? Or? <laughs> he looked at me and just said they are. <laughs> Vulcan mind build. Is that what that is? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Anyone else, sir? I just I do want to comment. So, to the members of the community, especially and. Mr. Apton, our architects from Mosley, thank you for being here and thank you for what we've done. We n understand this has been difficult. As Jeff alluded in his conversation, our first bid came in at $9 million over. The second series of bids after descoping still leads us to a point where we have to bond the completion of it for the athletic complex mm -hmm. at Osborne High School. And because we live in Northern Virginia, and everybody likes to compare apples and apples and unfortunately what we really have is fruit salad because we're building in a historic district and they're building in a cornfield so 
off the top, there's a million and a half in architectural stuff that wouldn't have to be done. This was the difficult conversations we really had yesterday to understand, understand what that scope difference is. There's probably another million, 900,000, a million dollars in LED lighting that we just learned what the, you know, net present value, what the payoff is. And the fancy heating system, and Mr. DeMary and I still don't know what a chill beam system is, but we now know you don't chill the I beams. But <laughs> somehow, whatever the chill beam system is, comes at a couple of million dollar cost, but a significant potential for downstream savings. And it's the standard in large scale facilities. And this isn't just a small elementary school, it's still 130, 140,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. It's very big. So the payoff's there. So we really had to understand that to say, the county's bid that was opened the same day comes in at why? And we're a whole lot more than that. And it's not because we're building a Taj Mahal. There are technical reasons why. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. Chair. Sorry. Ms. Spall. Uh, I have two things. About the um, breezeway, when hypothetically are, is Osborne actually going to get a real hallway? Breezeway. A breezeway. Yeah. When will the real hallway well, happen? There's going to be a breezeway. You mean the breezeway, <laughs> Mr. App? The breezeway that's part of this bid. I mean, when would it be? After complete? that, if you know this study is done and we don't need more classes there, and they get a real hallway that you don't have to go around to the front door to get in, you're not going through the cold every day. Is it going to be when my seventh grade brother is graduating in 2020? I think like what Dr. McGork said, depending on whether or not we need to increase the size of Osborne High School in that um, parking lot would determine whether or not we would close that in or not. Because that, that seems like the logical spot if we have to add on to Osborne High School. So it's possible that it could never happen? Well, no, what would happen is if if the school expands, there would be a hallway with classrooms there, a wing. All joined together. Or if the if we see the student population begin to decline, then we would, if that school board, if the school board at that time wished, they could add the walls at that time because it it will, it will be designed so that the foundation can hold walls, and we would then enclose it. It's just this temporary time. But Osborne High School is very full, and we have to think ahead. And to build something that, what would the cost was like one point four million dollars, yeah. to put some put one four million one point four million dollars into a walkway, and then three years from now say, oh, we got to add classrooms. We would tear that down, and it just didn't seem like a good use of funds at this time. Now we'll have a walkway. And yes, sometimes if there's blowing rain and wind, there, it could blow sideways. But it is better than what we have now. And it's in a place where the parking can still be used. It won't be in the front of the parking lot. It will be towards the back of the parking lot. And you will go in through the Johnson, from the Johnson wing to the back door of the school. But those doors are still going to be locked at all times. And if you're not going during class changes, you're going to have to go around a little fence. We will make, door. I will take that into consideration and we will make some, we will look into how we can make that work. Okay. Okay. Why are you going in and out when there's not class changes? <laughs> if I have to stay late to talk to a teacher, I don't know. Um, okay. And I guess my other thing is, I feel like it's kind of a dumb question, but if I don't ask it, no, such things. no one will. Um, do these kids get a playground? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Big, big cool playground. Yeah, there, there is. Um, I wonder if another picture might be better to show. Maybe not necessarily, but there is an enclosed playground um, for the pre-K and kindergarten on the left side. And then there is play area and an asphalt um, and on and the left side and the right side. For 11 helps six. you a little bit. Which one, 11? 11, yeah. a little bit. They don't really show up on these modified ones. Yeah. Ones. Well, they're... Might be able to tell there's there's might be able not to a playground it. at Mayfield Intermediate. Right. So on the 5, 6 side, you have more of the, that blacktop area. And I believe we have six mm -hmm. basketball standards going in there mm -hmm. on the right side. And then there's the green space for their playground. Um, they'll have playground equipment. What you can't see in the back where the pre-K classes are, there's an enclosed playground for the pre-K, very similar to like Baldwin has now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, and I'm going to jump on what Mr. Albrecht said. 
and the school in, in uh, Prince William County is also a duplicate or very close to uh, Yorkshire, Yorkshire Elementary and that reduces the cost that gives the bidders they know what they're getting into so a lot of different reasons that our number came in higher so. it's also a single story building compared to this being a multi-story building right. that was uh, it doesn't have the LED and uh, the heating that pays for itself over time right uh, and it doesn't have the historic district requirement. No, so, correct. So you combine those three factors, and there's a difference well, between the baseline and exactly. Right. And one of the things that they brought up was that it's it's a two-story building, and our the construction company said we're building a three-story building. The amount of extra steel that has to go into building that steel is much more expensive right now, and it was expensive on the first bid that we had. And they also commented on the stair stairwells. Uh, once you hit that third floor, everything costs more. Um, we're going to have a wonderful school. It's going to meet the needs of our students now and in the future. It will be a school that, um, as we look at Dean and what we do with Dean, um, it will provide opportunities for us to one day possibly have a magnet because it's still a school within a school. Right now, it's going to solve the overcrowding that we have um, across the division. Mayfield is bursting at the, at the seams. We will now have a school that will meet their needs, and those students will have the same access uh, to um, resources and opportunities, and their facility will mirror what they have at Mayfield. Um, I'm excited about where we're going, and I think that our architects um, have worked with us to hear what we need to have done, and that um, I look forward to the next two weeks um, where anybody in the community that which is which wishes to discuss um, Baldwin I please feel free to contact myself um, or our board members this will this is what we call sitting on the table for two for two weeks there's time for people to ask questions and um, there's time for discussion so I hope that um, so I hope that we that um, everyone will take that opportunity to look towards our future and ask the questions as we begin this process. Thank you. And in short terms, this building is a wonderful building, and it's going. If if this is the way the school board goes, it's going to give us options now and in the future. Anybody else? Um, I've got one more comment that May I forgot to make. If you will go back to the two the two time schedules. We are really trying hard for the September 2016 opening. We'll, when we begin um, looking at the 2017 budget, we'll make preparations. One of the things that we have with Mayfield is next year, there is a high probability that we'll have one or two trailers on the Mayfield campus. The sooner we get the school open, the quicker we can get trailers off the campus. And so our goal is to open 2016. Um, will we be able to remove all of the, the trailers that we have at currently across the division? I don't have that answer yet, but that's what we're working on right now. What we have to do is look at, um, we have to look at our student population this fall. We're growing between two to three percent. The next forward piece that we're working on is Dean, and Dean will also help us resol hopefully resolve some of our trailer issues. But the sooner that we get Baldwin open, the sooner that we can relieve Mayfield and some of our schools through a redistricting process that we will be looking at in the next two months and finish in January of 2017. Finish in January of 17? 20, uh, 2017, yeah. 2016, I'm sorry. Thank you. In 2016. Okay, now anybody else? Could I just, could I just, yes, sir. One, one thing, sir, I'm sorry, but the superintendent said something that made me think of this. None of this planning has taken place in a vacuum. We've, we've planned the construction of the school. Uh, we know that we needed a new Baldwin. We reached a point where we needed to build a new Baldwin at a time when we could afford it. In planning ahead, one of the things we have to do is we have to look at our debt service. And our debt service had gone down enough that we could afford a school of this size right now. It stretches us a little bit for the next couple of years. 
but a school of this size fit into our overall plans. That's what we've been planning around for some period of time. As Dr. McGorick talks about future needs, one of the things about debt service is that it does decrease over time. And in the fourth and fifth years of our current five-year plan, our debt service goes down significantly so that when it comes time for us to then again look at the possibility of a construction project, we will be in a better place vis-a-vis -vis our debt service and our ability to afford a new school or a replacement for Dean at that time. All of these things go together. It's not done in a piecemeal fashion. It's part of our overall facility needs, our ability to pay, and our ability to, to project the use of our revenue or, or our expenses down the road. So thank you. Sorry to interject. No, sir. Thank you very much. One more question. Ms. Ball. Sorry, I missed if you talked about um, for the January 2017 opening that first year, would there be a fifth grade class there? For the for this 2017 opening, no, there were not. Okay. Yeah, they would. We're not going to move them from Mayfield after a semester to move over. That All right, thank you. Doesn't seem. All right. Correct. Thank you. And you're dismissed. Thank you very much. Yeah.